Good morning, everybody, and uh, sorry that I don't speak any Swedish. Um, I'm Martin, and very nice to meet you. Thank you for the introduction, Anders. And uh, as I said, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my previous and my current job. Um, my, my talk is on storytelling and the power of archive content in stories. At Adidas, the history management team oversees about 80,000 objects. This includes lots of footwear, apparel, hardware, like balls, bags, beautiful bags, um, lots of documents, media, um, and uh, that's, that's a lot of objects. Um, the team also uh, has made this website available online internally to access archive content um, for our employees, for our staff. And when Anders and Alexander approached me and asked me whether I want to talk at, at this conference, uh, I said I no longer work at the Adidas Archive, where I oversaw content creation, communication, and marketing. But I said I, I now work in brand marketing, where I do campaigns for running. So, so they said it, I was the perfect fit to talk about uh, how we can use our heritage in today's marketing. Um, and that's why I'm here at the conference. So thanks for, for having me. So those elements basically is, is what I want to talk about today. Um, because for me, those, those components, as you just said, I picked up some bits, uh, are, are going into a direction about what is the value of our heritage and story and storytelling. So, I want to start uh, by talking first about, about, about my, my past job. This is Greta Weitz. Uh, on October 26, 1980, she broke the world record um, for women marathon running in New York. She won New York about nine times, or overall the nine times. Iconic Norwegian runner who also helped establish running for women um, long distance. That was a moment. And uh, what we did at, at the Adidas Archive was also try to cherish those moments and talk about um, that every single day and any given moment history can be created. Those are iconic moments that, that shape the power of sport, that shape cultural heritage, that help, help shape sports heritage and history. And uh, at any given moment, history can be created. So we did some documentation to talk about what we do at the archive and how that story and heritage can be utilized for our colleagues. And, and this is some imagery that we, that we shot at the archive. This shoe here is the Oregon F419A and B. A stands and B stand for the right and left model of that shoe, which Greta wore as part of a training. So that Oregon, um, of course, is archived. And the shoe, here we go. We talked about what we do with this product. So we, we take it out, we have a look at it, we, here we go, we open the box, we, we observe it closely, we look at all the details, we bring out those individual elements of what makes this shoe, um, and then we put it back in the box, and that's where it sits, as a treasure grove in our archive. And we also make it available online for people to access it, so anyone uh, working at Adidas can access this, this content, can access this collection, um, because we're not only located at global headquarters in Herzogenaurach in the beautiful middle of Franconia, but we also, of course, have, have colleagues working across the world. So that resource is available to all of them online. And you see here, it adds a lot of information about the product. You can find out more about the product. You can download the images. You can find out about the story and the product. Those authentic stories help build an identity and help build a deeper engagement with our brand, both for our consumers, but also for our staff internally and for our colleagues. And that's where we see the power of story. Now, moving to brand storytelling, uh, and I want to talk to you about a couple of examples from, from our story of how we've used our archive content in marketing. And I, I brought three examples uh, there's going to be some videos, so hope the sound works okay right now for this one. I'm going to start off with an example of foot, football. Anyone playing football here? One? Only one? Two? One? Come on. I'm sorry you lost yesterday, but again, three, four more people. Okay, we're getting there. Good. So, Predator, here we go. Have a look. I've stopped balls from the best players in the world. But in my 20 years in goal, I've never seen a ball do this. Oh, 
This shoe sucks. So this is Tony Miola, former US goalkeeper, talks about the beauties of, of this shoe and what it does to him as a goalkeeper. The Predator. It was introduced in 1994 uh, with this beautiful kind of catalog imagery as well, talking more about what this shoe is all about. Now, interesting, it was developed with a, a football player playing for Liverpool FC, who was also looking at table tennis. So the idea was to add rubber uh, to a football boot. That was the idea, uh, because it gives you more control and more power. And, uh, and that's when the Predator was born and how the Predator was born. So lots of communication, a beautiful archive content from the catalogs about, about that very product. 100% legal, 0% fair. And of course, we got beautiful, it came in beautiful packaging as well. Look at this box, isn't it powerful? To look at the Predator, that idea of aggressiveness, adding some color red to it, but also having it mimic sort of the actual shoe and how it looked. Quite aggressive. And then our colleagues from football marketing came up and said, guys, how can we use the Predator for our upcoming 2018 Predator launch? So we helped them work on a little history of the shoe, starting from 1994, going all the way to 2018, looking at different models, uh, name iterations and evolutions, um, and basically tell that story of, of the shoe. They actually added that question to as well, what's your favorite? So it was really interesting to see also what people got back with and how many actually went back and talked about that 1994 shoe. And they also made it available online uh, for everyone to see um, at a, they called it from the vaults, the Predator History Files, a website still available out there at adidas.co.uk for you to look at and have a look at how they told the story of, of Predator. And then they also, which I thought was quite nicely, kind of tried to do a collage on linking the past to the present or the future, which is, uh, I think, a quite nice way of interpreting uh, the old shoe and the new model, which was introduced in 2018. So the Predator. Here's a second example, this time from Originals. Uh, the product is called Deropt and came out in 2018. Um, Originals is more like the sort of style, business type of element of Adidas, looking into sportswear-inspired uh, lifestyle products and quite successful business unit for us as well. So the Deerup was another example where heritage content was used. At Heist and Biety, one of the uh, magazines talking about uh, the value of, of story and the value of sneakers, they talked about the new Adidas Deerup sneaker um, and basically in that article wrote this. Culture brings context to new innovative design. It allows us to make emotional connections with new technology. The archive for us is more than just shoes from the past. It interprets moments in time, people we've met, connections we've made. This link back to our collective memory inspires our design and the way we are as a brand today. Without it, we would not connect to culture in such a meaningful way. Those were words from our VP director of design for Adidas Originals. And I think has quite a lot of in it. He talks about the value of the archive. He talks about how it's more than just products. It's representing moments in time, icons of history, um, and allows us to build connections to today's products. And it's great to see also that that type of content, those stories are being told in these editorial magazines as well to talk about the value uh, and add more context to a shoe like the Deerupt. And this is how it's got its inspiration. What you see here is quite an iconic, quite telling element in the midsole, the so-called Dellinger web, which was co-developed with a former track and field coach. That web structure was taken up and helped inspire the new shoe, the Deerupt. This content was also gathered as part of a media visit that we had in our archive uh, to basically tell the story of that web structure. Also talk about why it was created and why it was uh, enhancing performance. And you'll also see some design sketches to the right where you see sort of that being taken up to the new shoe, the Deerupt. And here's a look at... It is the foundation of all design, from what lies in our past to what lies ahead. Now, the grid assumes its most disruptive form, Deerupt. So this was part of the marketing campaign uh, to tell the story of Deerupt and also launched lots of stuff online, like this Instagram post by our colleagues from Adidas Originals, talking at the archive for its grid design inspiration, 
uh, and then yet introducing that new shoe. So lots of archive content featured, uh, and again, used for actually inspiring a new product. How powerful is this? And here's the last example on Adi Zero, uh, the area that I now work in in running. You might know some of our running heritage. You might know some of some of our athletes. I just mentioned a couple, Haile Gebre Selassie, Mary Katani, and Ronix Kiputru, all are world record holders or marathon winners. There's a couple of more. But, but what's interesting, all of these shoes that they wore sit in our collection. So we got some worn shoes of those marathon world records. You still see the dirt on those shoes, which is quite, quite powerful and quite uh, telling. So those shoes and many more are in our collection, not just world records, but also just regular shoes, just not worn, but just made by our colleagues. And they sit in our collection. They were used and they were shot uh, for this campaign for Adi Zero. They also made a little gift sort of as part of that content uh, to, to create and show a nice way of, of having different uh, products flip through our history and our running heritage in our collection. And that all made it into a longer film. This is quite a long one, more like an editorial film as part of that campaign content, which I'd like to share with you now. It's never been about one person, one designer, or even one superstar athlete. It has always been about the team. The Audi Zero Audios Pro embodies that spirit of co-creation, and the result is pretty special. An iconic franchise like Audi Zero, it's a really incredible mix of heritage, shoemaking skill, elite athletes, and we've been part of countless gold medals. We need to be continuously innovating and not only evolving products, but at some point we also need to revolutionize the products. The brief was simple. How do we create a shoe that can claim back records? We started in San Diego with maybe five different concepts. And then we looked really into the athlete telling us what direction to go. We then built concepts and took them to E10 in Kenya, where we tested and validated them. Everybody tried every prototype, and then they really told us all of these little nitty gritty details that maybe the average athlete wouldn't be able to tell you. Then they realized, okay, wow, my inside actually makes it to a shoe. This is something we gave them and it became the Majambo. This is Majambos. 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 It's a Swahili slang. Something new, something amazing. We take insights from the athletes and tune them into engineering and technology of a running shoe. The carbon energy rods have been designed based on the anatomy of the foot mainly looking into bending stiffness. By doing that, we move them forward along their center of pressure into their next stride. It was fun to work with designers from Adidas. My ambition for the future of the franchise is to keep building products for each athlete so that they can absolutely perform at their best and win races, break their own PBs, and uh, eventually smash world records. That's classical marketing content of, of Adidas running, which was just recently launched. And um, just a little background for you. Yes, we were winning world, uh, we were winning races, we were beating world records, but um, for the past years, Adidas wasn't very good at that, to be perfectly honest. So we, we realized we needed to do something different. And so, so this story is very much about innovating a new product and uh, trying to evolve an existing franchise like the Adidas Zero uh, to new heights. And then this happened. We actually did break the world record. Paris, Jip Chigger, uh, broke the world record in half marathon and Prague in a race as well, just shortly after the Adi Zero was launched. Of course, this was a perfect fit for our story, but we didn't know it when that content was shot. And, and now the circle is being closed because this new shoe, the Adi Zero, and that world record shoe again is now part of our collection. So Sam, in a staged event, put it back and added it to the collection. Um, so we're very happy now to have that also as part of our collection of that growing Adi Zero franchise. So already coming to the end of my talk, um, and this is what I've learned about storytelling in my, at the, in my time at the archive as well as now in brand marketing. Any good story has a product which, which talks about benefits for you that could be kicking about for a, a ball better, looking cool or running faster. 
Any good story also has the audience in mind and leaves them with a feeling. Uh, that feeling can be that of joy, happiness, laughter, being inspired or being informed. And, and that's where our heritage and history comes in. And at Adidas, we got lots of opportunities to tap into our company's heritage and history. It allows us to really uh, tell a story from all sorts of different angles, whether that's company history or brand, sports culture or product, whether we're looking at design or indeed like the predator examples as part of our marketing story. I think any history that links uh, and finds an angle to add to that story and heritage is an authentic one. And those stories, I think, stick to mind. And that's where I see the power of stories and archive content in marketing. Thank you very much and looking forward to meeting all of you. Thank you, Martin. Questions for Martin? And while you think of it, I'm going to kick off with one. Uh, we talked a lot about storytelling and how to use the archive. Tell us a little bit about the archive itself. Number of people, sizes. Yes, it's a team of, uh, of about six people uh, overseeing, I said, 80,000 objects plus, right? That's lots of products, but it's, of course, lots of uh, media as well, like documents, lots of marketing campaign, lots of videos. Um, so it's, it's really bridging the gap of being a brand archive, but also looking at company and corporate history. Yep. It's located at a global headquarters uh, and actually has a dedicated archive space. We also have uh, two exhibitions out there that we're, that we're curating and telling stories. Exhibitions in the headquarters or that circulate... The world? Both and. Yeah. Uh, it's mainly also kind of at headquarters. Those are the ones that the team oversees, uh, but the team has also helped sort of curate exhibitions outside, like big museums as well, or, or other collaboration partners. Lovely. Questions? Eva has one. Uh, I've been thinking about those objects you uh, save. Um, do you have to make extra precautions due to material fatigue? How do you handle them over time? I can see from my own running shoes. After 10 years, the material is not as it used to be. And here you have a lot of used shoes, winner's shoes. I, I can imagine they have been used quite a few times. How do you care of them? Yes. Good question, of course. Uh, this is all about professional conditions. So we're very fortunate and lucky to have a professional archive which looks at climate control, temperature control, which basically stores the source products in acid-free boxes. Our apparel collection is also stored specially as well. So uh, I think that's the answer, really, making sure that you keep the collection uh, dry uh, in the best state possible. And that's why a professional team of archivists looks after our collection. What in moisture? Yeah, so um, the, basically the, the shoes that are worn are actually not in, a, not in a different state than the actual products that are not worn. So that really doesn't make too much of a difference. What's changing, of course, is over time, if, because we don't clean the shoes, we leave the dirt on to add that authenticity angle to it. So the shoes that I just showed you from Haile Gebre Selassie, those yellow ones from Adi Zero, um, they still have some sort of little little uh, gravel in them. There's still some dirt from the streets of Berlin when he ran that world record and was, became the first man to run a marathon under two hours in four minutes. That's sort of all there. So we don't clean that, we leave it on. Um, and it's actually not a problem at well from a conservative side and point of view. Thank you. You're welcome. Question back there. Hello. <laughs> um, I was wondering, do you uh, plan how much of your content is related to your history over a year? I mean, how do you work with it on a regular basis? Do you mean from a marketing side or from yes. an archive side? Yeah, so it very much, I think, uh, depends on the story, really, that we're trying to tell. Now I'm working on a marketing campaign. I'd love to add some story angle to it, but I won't because it doesn't make sense. There is no history to that product. So I think... And this is just maybe a personal way of seeing it because, of course, there's many different marketing people out there. But I think you need to try to find a good angle to it to add that component of story and, and, and history to it. Uh, if it's not there, I don't think it makes any sense to find it. Okay, so it's the angle that drives the story. I'd say, yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. And then a question to percentage. That very, very much depends also on the type of story you want to tell. Um, so the Predator story, I think, was a lot about, about, about that archive because it was celebrating an anniversary. 
um, where the Dear Robert story was more like a design inspiration, therefore part of that featured as part of the story. A question for me about how do you capture what happens today and fill up the archive and keep, I mean, yesterday is already history. Yeah, so that's, of course, a big task for the team right now. And I, of course, not in the team any longer, so I can't, can't fully talk about that updated uh, acquisition strategy. But what we've always tried to do is actually reach out to our colleagues uh, when they're striking new designs. Uh, when there's franchises like the Adi Zero that evolve, we want to extend that story and therefore reach out and basically talk to them and tell them about the value of adding their work uh, to our collection. So it's a lot about uh, relationship management with our colleagues. Um, and, uh, and very often when athletes come and visit, they, they actually physically hand over their shoe to, or their products to us, not just shoes, but also apparel and stuff. So that also, that also happens a lot. Um. Yeah, it seems that Adidas uh, caught on really early on that history marketing is a great thing in preserving those shoes, for example. But uh, I'm wondering, um, is it part of the deal with the athletes that they return the shoes afterwards or uh, is it something that they do <laughs> willingly afterwards? Yeah. So the, the athletes never own the shoes, <laughs> okay? That's... <laughs> it's still us, it's still product of Adidas, right? So, of course, if they want to keep it, and some of them are very, very protective also of their moments that they try to capture, and maybe even building an own museum, right, on their own, because, uh, but I think generally it's, again, about relationship management, and very often it's about, hey, we got the professional conditions to make sure that this, your moment, uh, stays in the best shape possible for as long as possible. Eventually, all products are going to deteriorate in the status of which or those are going to deteriorate. But, but we, can, we can keep that state uh, for a longer time if kept in, in good conditions. Thank you. Adidas being a global brand, I mean, you sell apparel and shoes everywhere. Do you, have you any sense of is history more attractive in certain markets? Is the heritage more important in certain markets than others? Yeah, it's interesting that this story angle resonates globally. Um, but there is a big interest in, in, in the Asian countries, in the Asian market. There's a big interest in, in North America as well, uh, where, where there's a big link uh, that's, that's been established, like, like you talked earlier about markets or brands talking about how long they've been around. So I think there is a sense of, of that element to it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, I'd say, what the big markets are. And then, of course, depending on where the story is, is from or where the story is, 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 where the product is from, where the athlete is from, there might be some, some local dependencies. Any final questions? One question here. Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you lend out items from the archive? Yeah, that happens. Uh, we... Um, of course, again, can't talk too much about what's happening now in the collection because I'm, I'm, I'm no longer part of the team. Um, but uh, we used to work with big museums. We used to work with our partners internally, organizing uh, exhibitions. Um, big, big names out there on the list, right? The MoMA, we've worked with Paris Centre Pompidou, um, uh, currently the London Design Museum, the Victorian Albert Museum. So some big, some big fish out there which of course is, a, is, is, is cool to then land some, some of our products in those, in those exhibitions, uh, but also quite small ones, pop-up exhibitions or very niche ones. Um, so yeah, we do, but of course then take care and need to make sure that we're, that we're actually keeping the products in, in the best state possible also as part of that exhibition. So we actually have a loan contract goes out with every single loan. Question here, you, you want? Thank you for a very good presentation. Um, <clears throat> if I remember it correctly, you share the history with Puma and the Dassler brothers, something like that. So two questions. Do you, have you ever shared any kind of history marketing campaigns with Puma? And have there been any kind of differences, differences in how you describe the original history? Fascinating topic, of course. <laughs> How long have you got? Okay, yeah, <clears throat> okay, but still, yes. Uh, there was one big moment where actually two companies came together. This was in 2009, where a friendly football match was organized. And, uh, and we should probably 
enlightened people who don't know the origin story. So yes. two brothers, Dustler. So the, the story of the Dustler family is about two brothers, um, Adolf and Rudolf Dustler, going separate ways, working initially together as the brother Dustler Shoe Company, but then founding their two uh, separate companies, Adidas and Puma. Uh, fascinating. All in the middle of Herzog and Aurach, a tiny little town, unbelievable story. Um, actually being filmed two documentaries also on that uh, as well. So we went back and actually did that story together. This was more like an employee branding event. It was called Peace One Day. <laughs> uh, and actually, it's really good to see that, of course, there's competition, clearly, right? In any business that you're in, there is competition. Um, but um, there's, there's normal talk happening between our CEOs. Uh, there's normal talk happening between colleagues. That used to be different, but luckily it's changed. Regarding your question about marketing campaign, we haven't done that yet. And I, I don't think that's going to happen at some stage because it's more like the one story is more like the Adi, Adi angle. The other is more like the Rudolf Dassler angle. So I think the stories eventually are going to go separate ways, especially if we're looking at product creations, uh, which then sort of go back um, to that time. That's why we try to focus on any product story starting from 1949, the year Adidas was founded, and not focus so much on the time prior to that. We also house that collection of the Brother Duster Shoe Company, um, but we are focusing in our, in our um, marketing stories um, on the time of 1949 onwards. And now you have, if you didn't know it, so Adolf Dassler, called Adi, Adi Dust. If you had. That's it. Martin, thank you so much for coming to us and sharing all this around. Thank you. Mm -hmm.